In these days leading up to Thanksgiving, we're looking at Psalms 9 and 10, which are, which are related. We'll go more into that tomorrow for the last devotion of this series before we pick it up again in December. We'll come back in December for about two weeks, right around Christmas leading up to the holiday there. But in Psalm 10, there, the psalmist uses a lot of very descriptive words and phrases in a couple of different categories. So firstly, the psalmist David, he, he describes the, uh, the intentions and the actions of the enemy. Excuse me while I look away from the camera here just uh, to get all of these. But various things that David writes down that the enemy is doing or trying to do. They, they hurt the weak, they scheme, they swear, they curse, they lie, they threat, they ambush, they murder, they crush, they collapse, they are arrogant, they're ungodly, and they're prideful. And we see a lot of those things in our world today, of course. We can see a lot of those things in our own lives, of course. We have enemies too. People who aren't always loving and patient and kind. And when someone isn't, and when someone is those things that David describes, that has an impact. Another category that David, that you could pull from Psalm 10 is the category of, well, the feelings of those who are impacted by the actions of the enemies. So here are the feelings that David describes in Psalm 10, that because of what the enemies do, people are oppressed, troubled, afflicted, crushed, helpless, full of grief, and alone. He doesn't use the word alone, he uses the word fatherless. Like somebody's missing somebody that's supposed to be in their life and they're walking through life in some way, alone. I don't know which of those words you would use to describe yourself right now, if any of them, or which one you would use to describe yourself most recently, if you had to pick one. Oppressed, troubled, afflicted, crushed, helpless, full of grief, alone. None of them make us feel good. Which is why it's important to pay attention to a third category that David brings up in Psalm 10. He talks about the intentions and the actions of the enemy. He talks about the impact that has the feelings of those that they oppose. And then he talks about the actions of God in response to this. Two different verses. Verse 12 says, He does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. And then verse 18, he says, The needy will not be forgotten. Which means that if you are alone or afflicted or troubled or oppressed or crushed or full of grief or helpless, you're going to be okay. God sees you. He won't ignore you. When you come to him, he'll answer you. That's all he ever does. He takes action. And even when nobody would blame him if he didn't, go all the way back to the very beginning, to Adam and Eve. He created their world perfect. He made them perfect. Everything was there for them to enjoy. It's like the perfect Thanksgiving day every moment of every single day. And they threw it away by throwing God away. And what did God do? He took action. He had compassion. He came to them. He sought them out to love them, to care for them. To love and care for them. And that's what we see him continuing to do. Page after page in his word. Look at Calvary. Loving and caring and forgiving them. And us. Look at Jesus in his ministry loving and caring and forgiving and responding to the needs of people just like us. Some days you feel weak. Some days you feel alone. 
Sometimes you hurt a lot. Doesn't mean you won't be okay. It means, in fact, that you have the right to expect that your God will take action at the right time in just the right way. Rest well tonight, my friends.